first thing I did when I started creating the show was choosing the music. Um, because I wanted to reflect the different ages of the performers. I was looking to protest music of very different times. Like I think a more obvious choice, which is great music, would be like Nina Simone or Bob Dylan. I felt like I want to dive into history and look uh, to different things. So um, in the end, I came with three music pieces from three different times, one of 1960, one of 1980, and one of 2020. So the concept is of 1980. 1960 is this experimental jazz piece by um, Max Roach and Abby Lincoln, which was really about the, the civil rights movement in America, born there. And the 2020 um, piece is, I think, the most poppy, is by Kay Tempest. There is just such a beautiful voice for the generation of nowadays. It took uh, people's faces, it's called. Uh, she talks about everything which goes wrong and there is no money to pay the rent and that there is no work but that in the end when they are standing on the in the train and, and seeing the people around her she all they always get so uh, emotional by seeing the, the faces of the people and i found that something which um which really uh, stands for this performance as well the, the beauty of the diversity of of humankind of who we are and i think yeah pop music is is um or music in general, it's always such an image of a time. They can be a voice for the generation, and that is why I like to work with it. I don't mind that it's popular. I think it's good that it's popular um, because it's, it, it can speak to, to many people. And so what I did was to ask all the different performers, of which the youngest at creation was 15 and the oldest 70, now they are two years older, um, was to write their own movement on this music. It has a very difficult, complex counting system. It's very different rhythmically. So what we did was I explained the, the structure of the music, but then I told them, look, everybody's going to make with their own language movements to this music. And that was for me a metaphor of this, the possibility of um, a coexistence of different languages, to, to have one rhythm, but to speak different languages, and that it is possible to, to, to work together. So that was one part, all those different languages. But then through the repetition, I also looked for a way, um, if you look at the beginning of the performance and the end of the performance, the movement they wrote on this music has transformed drastically. In the beginning, it is very formal, it is very neat and tight, but by repeating the movement, and that's how we, how we build the choreographic language, they free themselves. And that is the metaphor of if you insist in a movement, if you insist and, and do the same thing and again and again, maybe you, can, you, all, you are able to liberate yourself. And when we did that, I felt, okay, we have a very hopeful um, message here, a very great message, because in the end, in the end we have like this really a uh, beautiful scene with 17 dancers doing all their own movements through each other in a very liberating way and it's a very uh, positive feeling which which evolves in the audience. I find often in dance that an audience is underestimated. Sometimes it's underestimated and sometimes it becomes so conceptual and so only for dancers or for, for very intellectual people that, that it doesn't speak to anybody anymore, only for your peers. And I find there is so little in the middle, there is so little which challenges, but at the same time um, speaks. And that is the balance I try to find.